Hello, this is Federico Castanedo, and I will explain you how to apply advanced dimensionality reduction techniques to solve exciting problems. I got a PhD in artificial intelligence and have many years of data science experience in academia, startups, and large corporations. Before we start, please remember this is an advanced course, and we expect you have taken the previous course on dimensionality reduction. Let's begin with a brief introduction of the dimensionality reduction techniques that we will learn, and then we will explore the MNIST dataset. In this course, we will learn how to apply two state-of-the-art dimensionality reduction techniques, TSNE and generalized low-rank models. T-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding, or TSNE, is an algorithm that performs nonlinear dimensionality reduction, and we will explore how to use it in predictive models. On the other hand, we will also review GLRM, which is a parallelized optimization algorithm that can be used with numerical and categorical variables and allows to impute missing values. Dimensionality reduction techniques are based on unsupervised machine learning algorithms, and their application offers several advantages. It provides a way of doing feature selection. It compresses high-dimensional data into a few important features. It saves memory and speeds up building machine learning models. It allows the visualization of high-dimensional data sets. And in the case of GLRM, it also imputes missing data. In this course, we will learn how to apply these dimensionality reduction techniques to exploit the mentioned advantages. Using interesting datasets like the MNIST, a credit card fraud dataset from Kaggle, and the fashion version of the MNIST released by Zalando. Before we start reducing data dimensionality, let's have a look at the MNIST dataset. The MNIST dataset is a very well-known dataset used to evaluate the performance of machine learning models. It consists of 70,000 images of handwriting digits ranging from 0 to 9. Each image is 28 pixels in height and 28 pixels in width, which makes a total of 784 pixels. Every pixel has a single value associated with it indicating its Leibniz or Darnex, which is an integer between 0 and 250. In this image, you can see an example of the number 3. Let's look at some more digit samples. Here, you can see more examples of handwriting digits from 0 to 9. It is clear that, as humans, we have several ways to write each digit, and a machine must be able to take all of them into account. As we will see, this is not an easy task. Let's have a look at the first six records and columns. As an another example, we are showing the values of pixels 400 to 405 for the first record. Note that we are selecting columns 402 to 407 because the first column is the label and the pixels start at zero. Remember that each pixel is an integer between 0 and 250 that indicates its lineness or darkness. We can expect that same digits will have similar values in each pixel. So, one assumption is to compute the pixel statistics of the same digits. For instance, here we show the statistics of digits 1 and 0 for pixel 408. As you can see, they have extremely different values for that pixel. Let's get started with the MNIST dataset and do some data experiments. 